In the previous videos, we worked on the online part of the app and were able to make a request to the API and get the news from the API and finally display it. In this video, we want to start working on the offline part and create the local database. We will use the floor package for the database. The floor database is inspired by the room persistence library. It comes with automatic mapping between in-memory objects and database rows while still offering full control of the database with the use of SQL. It is a layer that sits on top of an SQLite database and makes it easier to use. The floor plugin uses the architecture pattern data access objects or DAO. If you are working on a project then you might separate it into layers. For example presentation layer contains UI, then domain layer contains business logic. Then we have the data access layer which would be the layer communicating with the database. Therefore in that layer one can use the DAO pattern. The DAO is basically an interface or abstract class in which you declare different methods that will add, delete, update or read from the database. Without using the DAO pattern, you would have to manually write the code to perform those operations which could be error prone. Before creating the abstract class, we need to create an entity class. The entity class would represent a table in the database, therefore the class name will be the table name and the fields will be the columns in the table. We have the article entity right now, and this class is supposed to be converted into a table in the database. But as we said before, we should not use entity in the data layer and we should use the model instead. Therefore we open the article model. To convert a class into a table, we must use entity annotation to mark a class as an entity class. We use the annotation at entity above the class declaration. Then we set the table name inside it. Since every table has a primary key, therefore we set field ID as primary key like this. After creating the entity class, we now need to create the DAO or data access object abstract class. To do this, first we create a folder called DAO and data sources. Then we create a file called article DAO inside this. Now we define an abstract class called article DAO. We need use the annotation at DAO to mark the abstract class as a data access object. We will have three methods, insert, delete, and get. First, we define a method called insert article. This method is supposed to insert the articles in the database. To be able to insert articles in the database, all we have to do is annotate the method with the at insert annotation. We do exactly the same for the delete method. We define a method called delete article, then use the delete annotation. To fetch the inserted articles, we first define a method called getArticles, which returns a list of article models. We don't have annotation to fetch and we have to write a SQL query. For this we can use query annotation and write the desired query inside it. The implementation of article DAO is finished and now we have to create the database of the application. To do this, we first create a file in the local folder called app database. Then inside it we define an abstract class called app database which extends floor database. Now we need annotate the class with the at database annotation, which we also provide a list of entities. Now to be able to access the methods declared in the Articleto abstract class, we create an abstract getter method like this. As you may know floor uses generator, so we need to add this line above the class definition. Now open the terminal and run this command to generate the codes. To fix these errors, it is enough to import these libraries in the app database file. The implementation of the database is finished, now we have to call the method that creates the database somewhere. As you guessed we have to do this in injection container. Therefore, we open injection container file and build the database in this way. We use the generated class floor app database to be able to create the database under the name app database.db. And finally, we have to register the app database class like this. Now we have delete the app and run it again. To fix this error, it is enough to call ensure initialized using widgets flutter binding before calling initialized dependencies. Now restart the app again. We will see that the app runs without any problems. In order to understand whether the database has been created correctly or not, we must use the DB browser software. I will put the link of this software in the description. To use this software, we have to open Android Studio and find the project package name from the device browser and export the database in this way and import it in the DB browser. As you can see the article table is displayed, so everything is okay. In the next video we will use the database, so stay with me, and make sure hit the subscribe button to get next video.